What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna tell you how I learned Python, the programming language, in just about 10 days, and how you can too. Quick mandatory disclaimer, by no means am I saying that I became or that you will become an expert in Python in just 10 days. No, that would be very unreasonable. What I am saying, however, is that in about 10 days, I became, and you can become, pretty well versed in Python to be able to confidently say that you can read and write Python. Or for instance, to be able to comfortably walk into a coding interview room at a big tech company like Google, for instance, and pass the interviews in Python like I did. One more thing, there is a prerequisite here, which is that you need to have the sort of fundamental programming concepts down for this to work. Ideally, you know how to code in another language like JavaScript or C++, but you need to know, for instance, what a for loop is or what a conditional statement is or what a function is. If you don't know these sort of very basic concepts, then you'll have a little bit more work to do. And here I would really recommend, you know, maybe starting with one of the very beginner tracks on Code Academy or other sort of websites like that. But otherwise, if you're someone who already knows those fundamental concepts or who knows how to code in JavaScript or C++ or Java, but you don't know any Python, then this video is going to be perfect for you. So for those of you who don't know, in late January, early February 2017, I had my on-site coding interviews for software engineering positions at Google and Two Sigma scheduled. Two Sigma is a sort of you know, tech-oriented hedge fund. And I had 10 days, 10 full days, to prepare for those coding interviews. Now, I had just graduated from a coding boot camp a couple months before, with no prior coding experience before the boot camp. And what I knew, what I had been taught, was full stack JavaScript. So I was very well versed in JavaScript. The problem was that Two Sigma said that in the interviews, you would have to interview using one of three programming languages. Java, C++, or Python. Now, I was not in the business, definitely not in the business, of learning Java or C++ in just 10 days. That would have been just way too hard. I had heard a lot of people say, hey, Python is pretty easy, you can pick it up pretty fast, it reads like English, so I said, all right, I'm gonna do it. So my end goal was to pass the coding interviews that I had scheduled. In order to do that, I was obviously gonna practice doing a bunch of coding interview questions. And that's where I got lucky, because coding interview questions are very unique in that they force you to be very comfortable with the fundamental building blocks of a programming language. If you were to do right now 50 or 70 coding interview questions, I guarantee you that you would have to at least once, but probably way more than once, iterate over a list, or manipulate a string, or sort a list of numbers, or you know, deal with conditional statements, declare a class, you're definitely gonna have to declare functions, deal with null values. The point that I'm trying to make is that when you do all these coding interview questions, you're gonna be confronted with situations where you need these sort of fundamental building blocks of whatever programming language you're using. And that was the key to my picking up Python in 10 days. I told myself, starting now, I'm gonna do all of my coding interview questions in Python, even though I literally don't know any Python and I don't even know how to declare a function. And every single time that I come across something that I don't know how to do, you know, I'm like, oh, I need to declare a hash table here, but how do I declare a hash table in Python? I'm just gonna Google it. Look it up, use Python documentation online, go on Stack Overflow, and figure it out. Otherwise, if I know how to do whatever I need to do, if I already know how to do a conditional statement or a for loop, I'm just gonna go ahead with my problem. But if I'm confronted with something that I don't know, like maybe, I don't know, mapping a list of numbers to another list of numbers, I'm gonna look that up. And that ended up working beautifully for me. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I would do this, how I would learn Python by doing coding interview questions. For this example, we're just gonna use AlgoExpert. Okay, if we go on AlgoExpert.io, just wanna quickly clarify that I'm really only using AlgoExpert here as an example for the purpose of this video. But as far as learning Python in 10 days is concerned, all you need are coding interview questions. It doesn't matter what source you get them from. 
but I'd recommend Algo Expert. And we're gonna pick any random question. Let's go with uh, max profit with K transactions, which is sort of the, the default question on the website. So imagine that I do not know how to write any Python here, and I'm faced with this screen. Immediately, I see that, okay, to declare a function in Python, apparently you use the def keyword, then you declare the function name, and then you pass in the parameters, and then you use this colon instead of brackets, which is what I'm used to in JavaScript. Okay, so right off the bat, I've sort of gotten something for free. Now, here, of course, I would read the question, and I would try to, under, like, try to think algorithmically, how am I gonna solve this question, giving no sort of worry to how I'm gonna do it syntactically in Python. But then, once I'm ready to start coding out the question, I'm gonna start asking myself, okay, what do I write here? I know this question, I've done it like a billion times, but I'm gonna tell myself, okay, I wanna check the cases where we have no stock prices. So where this list of prices is empty. So in JavaScript, I would probably do something like if open, open parentheses, uh, prices dot length equals zero, open bracket, you know, return, I guess, uh, zero here, because we're returning the max profit. Okay, let's see how we would do that in Python. We actually says, let's say we assume that if, okay, that's a keyword, and we get a keyword, if, uh, in open parentheses, that's right, in JavaScript, if prices dot length, that also looks like it's a keyword, open bracket, oh, sorry, if prices dot length is, um, let's say, equal zero, open bracket, return zero, and simple. That's how I would write this in JavaScript, so I'm just gonna, like, play around with it. Let's run the code. Okay, it's failing everything. This might be because, like, it's just pa failing test cases, but let's look at the raw output. Okay, invalid syntax. So the three equals is an invalid syntax. So immediately I can start looking up how or an equal operator in Python. Okay, boom, you immediately get it here, right here in Google. Like I don't even have to click on a website. It's a double equal. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna fix this to double equal and I'm gonna run code again. Okay, invalid syntax again. So now I'm using brackets. Okay, so here I'm, I'm a little stumped. Let's just like look up if else statements in Python. So I'm gonna go on Google and I'm gonna say uh, if statements. It's literally Google is so smart that already guesses that I'm looking up if statement in Python. Wait, let's see. If I backspace, literally just the word if, it knows if in Python. That's so crazy. If in Python, okay. Python if else, W3 schools, perfect. I'm gonna click on that. Boom, what do you know? Right here, I've got if b greater than a colon this. And by the way, I want to say, like, this is crazy. I've already learned so much from just this web page right here. I've learned that, well, the double equal again, although I had learned that before. I learned about exclamation point equal. That's apparently the, like, not equal operator. Okay, great. I've learned that apparently to declare variables, I don't need a keyword like const or let or var in front because it looks like they're just doing a equals 33, b equals 200. Then I've learned how to write an if, if statement. Apparently it's just a colon and then the thing has to be indented. And then I've learned that if you want to log something, apparently you can use this print function. Oh, and here, indentation. I found it relies on indentation using white space to define scope and code. Often programming with other programming languages often use curly brackets for this purpose. Okay, great. I just learned so much. W3Schools has literally, like, it's giving me everything here for free. Like, look on the side. Everything here is literally what I need to learn Python. Like, if I go through all these links, I'll probably have everything already. But anyway, so let's go back to the, to the problem. Um, to set, okay, bracket, I'm going to remove this uh, and remove the colon. So let's run code. Okay, so I'm still getting some weird stuff. List object has no attribute length. Okay, so clearly my colon worked, my if statement worked. So let's go back to Google and, uh, or to, here, wait, we're on W3Schools. Let's just go to Python arrays right here. We're looking for the length. Apparently dot length doesn't work. Oh, perfect, length of an array. Use the len parentheses method. X equals len dot cars, perfect. So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna delete this, I'm gonna do len of prices equals zero. Whoops, len of prices equals zero. We're gonna run our code. And now, uh, let's see, wait, it looks like it passed. Yeah, okay, so it passed. So this, like, we're failing test cases because obviously I didn't read the entire code. But look, we've already learned that in Python, you can write an if statement like this. And, and if I go back, actually, and I go back to the if statement, I don't think we actually needed the parentheses. So I can go back here, delete the parentheses, and run this, and let's see if it works. It works. What do you know? Okay, okay, Python is amazing. Apparently, you don't need any syntax in Python. It's just like English. Um, then I'll go back and... I also saw that here there was no semicolon, so I guess maybe you don't, I mean, you don't need semicolons in JavaScript either, but you do need them, I think, in Java or C++, correct? Let's see, do you need them in C++? 
I think you'd need them in C++. Anyway, um, if we go back to here, so you, I can take off the, the semicolon and let's see if that works. It does work. Okay, so now I've learned so many things already. I've learned how to do if-else statements. I guess I would have to look for if-else for statements here. Uh, LF, okay, if, LF, because okay, so now I kind of understand how if-else statements work. But so this is a perfect example, example of how just in this very first question, in the very first, like, four, three lines, I don't know how to count, three lines of code, I learned so much about the Python programming language so easily by just looking it up. So now let's say that we want to loop through an array. So we're going to look up for loops in Python. Let's see, for loops Python documentation. Okay, first, work, control, flow, tools, Python, four, Python, four, just looks like correct documentation, let's click on that. Okay, if statements, for statements, perfect. So for statements, Python differs differently, maybe used to in C or Pascal. Python's for statements, theories over the end of the sequence, listener string, any order that they appear in the sequence. For example, no pun intended, they even give you humor. This is such a pleasant way to learn Python. For W in words, print W len of W. Okay, so now we know how to do a for loop, and we know that apparently we can print two things in a print statement with just a comma in between the parameters. And if we want to test it out, what I like to do is just open a terminal window, install Python, and just run stuff and see if it works. If I run Python and I do array equals one, two, three, and I do four LA in array, uh, tab print LA, and then let me go land of the array to see if we print two things. And boom, I confirmed that this works. Now let's do something a bit more difficult. And you come across a problem where you want to iterate through a list, not from start to end, but from end to start. So you want to iterate in reverse order over the list. In JavaScript, I would probably just do a for loop with the iterator variable, you know, my index variable, starting at the very last index in the array and decrementing all the way until it's, you know, negative one, less than zero. But I don't know how to do that in Python, so let's look it up. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna look up uh, how to how to iterate over an array in reverse order in reverse in Python. Let's just look that up. Okay, different ways. Um, cyber reverse order in Python. Perfect. Okay, so. All right, use the built-in reversed function. 1,022 upvotes. For i in reversed a, print a. Okay, let's just test it out. For la in reversed array, um, print la and huzzah, or hooray. And I'm Three array, two array, one array. So perfect. Now we know how to iterate in reversed order. That was something that was a bit more complicated, and yet we found it instantly. Something even harder. Let's take lambda functions in Python. Now I remember when I first discovered lambda functions in Python, I think the way that I found them was because I was trying to mimic, you know, the dot map or dot reduce methods in, in JavaScript. You know, I wanted to map a list of values to another list of values, doing some sort of uh, transform function in the mix. So let's look that up. I'll just do um, how to dot map in Python. Let's look it up. Have you mapped Python? That function applies to the variable, the variable mapping task. Okay, this isn't really helping me that much. Uh, let's look at geeks for geeks. Okay, we can also use lambda expressions with map to achieve the above result. Map lambda x colon x plus x numbers. So let's see if I go back to my terminal and I want to map this array to like uh, multiply the values by four. Uh, foo equals uh, no, array map, map lambda x colon x multiplied by four. And then let's go back. It said comma numbers. So comma array close parentheses. That's it, right? So now we have foo and boom. Foo is four eight twelve. Perfect. Just like that, we were able to look up something a bit more complicated like lambda functions. And again, this doesn't stop at lambda functions. You can look up stuff that's even more complicated, like maybe how to initialize a class, right? Python, how to initialize a class. And we can look up uh, Python documentation, perfect classes. Okay, here I would have to take a pause and actually read this. I'm gonna cut myself off there because I think you get the idea at this point. Ultimately, you can use Google and the Python documentation to really teach yourself everything there is to know about Python for these coding interview questions, from the super easy stuff all the way to the more complicated stuff like classes, for instance. So that's it. That's how I learned Python in just 10 days and how you can too. Just do somewhere around 50 coding interview questions and you will be forced to look up all of those fundamental building blocks of the Python programming language and to learn them. This is a very, very fun way, or at least not everybody finds coding interview questions fun, but at least it is a very intellectually stimulating, let's put it that way, uh, intellectually stimulating way to learn Python very fast or to learn any other programming language, to be honest, because you could do this with C++ or Java or JavaScript. It might take a bit longer with those languages, especially C++, Java, just because they're more complicated than Python, but uh, you can do it. And this also sort of kills two birds with one stone because uh, practicing your coding interview skills is something that will be very useful probably at one point in your career, either if you 
are preparing for your first job, or if you're already, you are already in the industry, you might have to interview later on. So it's a good way to sort of do two things at once. And the beauty in this is that nobody's imposing that you learn Python in 10 days. I happen to have this sort of stressful deadline because of the situation that I was in, but odds are you don't have that same 10 day deadline. If you do, then this is probably the best way to learn Python that I found, but if you don't, then you've got way more time and you can do the same thing just in a much more relaxed manner. And once you have those fundamental building blocks that I keep mentioning down, you'll be able to teach yourself more complicated stuff like Django or how to use libraries like TensorFlow and Pandas, because you'll have that sort of core Python knowledge that you need for those more advanced things. That's gonna be it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Do let me know in the comments if you've used this method to learn Python in the past, or if you have another method that's worked for you in the past. I'd love to hear that, I'd be super curious. And of course, don't forget, annihilate the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on that notification bell. I'm posting three times a week. You don't wanna miss out on that content if it interests you. And I'll see you in 10 days when you're an expert in Python. JK, you're not gonna be an expert in Python in 10 days. But when you are well-versed in Python,